Hey everyone I hope you enjoy this video, and see you next time. As everyone sat around the table which did include Nezu since he was a part of the planning for the war. The heroes and some police were told what was going on with the targets they would be going after. As it stands, the commission has been gathering a large number of heroes for a war that they have discovered that will start soon. They are hoping to attack first to have the upper hand but we still will be fighting an uphill battle. The enemy is the Paranormal Liberation Front which is a merged group of the League of Villains and a return of the Meta Liberation Army. As it stands from what the Commission had gathered they believe the forces amount to over 116,000 individuals though we will be attacking the main base and the lab that Shigaraki is held in undergoing an experiment to gain more power. The detective said and some asked how the Commission found this information out but the detective shook his head. He explained that he was not informed of how they obtained the information as they have been using him mainly to clear who was a PFL member or not. As it stands you are not allowed to talk to those that are not on the approved list as they may be a PFL member or haven't been cleared by being questioned like all of you have been. The detective said and that earned nods of heads from everyone. The detective explained that they were evacuating cities already by the commission faking. A chemical attack by a villain on the cities between the mountain villa and the hospital. Some asked if that would not alert the PFL which Nezu spoke up at. We've planned it quite well as we are going to have it covered by the media as it happens so the PFL will learn about the attack as heroes will chance the staged villain down. It will be staged as a group that aims to cleanse the earth of people with mutations which several of the cities in the path have a larger population of said quirks. Nezu explained as he said the attacks would happen on the same day so as not to arouse suspicion and nothing will be prepared in advance so it looks like a real rush to secure the citizens and move them away from the chemical attack. The citizens would then be moved to a few cities over where they knew it had enough places to hold the people long enough. Soon the topic came to that anyone with a provisional license would also be pulled to help evacuate the cities for the most part with some being on the front lines to help counter some quirks of known PFL members that they found out about. Otherwise, the students would all be on the back lines while the pro heroes would take the front stage in the war. Some wanted to reject the reason but Nezu reminded them that if they pulled too many pro heroes from other places then there wouldn't be enough to keep crime and problems from arising in other cities behind their backs which shut them all up. They realized they needed to have the numbers to fight in this battle and it was a scary fact. After the meeting came to an end. Everyone returned to go back to normal business and to prepare for the coming battle in a few weeks as the detective would keep clearing more heroes and others for the coming battle. While this happened, Nezu returned to UA with Eraserhead which the ride back to the school was silent until about halfway there when Eraserhead spoke up. I need to know the truth before this war starts, Eraserhead said as he broke the silence. Nezu raised an eyebrow without turning to face the man as he asked what he was talking about though he knew the truth. Eraserhead was asking about Izuku Midoriya and Nezu knew that. I am talking about the interrogation of Izuku Midoriya. I am talking about how it seems full of bullshit that you and Gran Torino keep pulling as he avoids getting into conversations with anyone outside of really you. I need to know before I go into this war. My class needs to know. The racer had asked as he glared at the principal without turning on his quirk. Nezu turned to shout Aizawa and looked at him in the eyes without missing a beat as he spoke. Class 1A and 1B will be offered an exemption from being pulled into the war due to their former relation to Izuku Midoriya as it's unknown what information he gave to the PFL about his former classmates nor do we know where he will be at on the battlefield once it starts. I sadly cannot offer that to any of my staff since you are all pro heroes already but since they are students the commission agreed to offer it. Make sure they understand that there is a high risk of death in this war and they wouldn't be judged for taking the exemption offered due to their former connection to the S-rank villain Izuku Midoriya Aka accused. Nezu said as he turned away from Eraserhead who eyes widened at the statement as the commission had not released what his villain rank was and the fact that such an offer was being offered. It meant either Nezu really wanted to protect his students so they can avoid the war or Izuku Midoriya truly did turn on them but something kept nagging as Aizawa since the statement from Nezu was not a true answer and Aizawa knew that. This was how Aizawa found himself standing in front of 1A and 1B as he informed them of the coming war that they would be helping in. The students were freaked out but Aizawa had one more thing to say. The commission has agreed to offer these two classes an exemption if you desire to take it due to your former relations with the S-rank villain accused Aka Izuku Midoriya. It's unknown what information he provided the PFL about you all or where he will be on the battlefield so they can't place you away from him. There is a risk of you facing him in this war meaning you would need to fight him. I want you all to think about it, Aizawa said to both classes who were shocked. None of them said anything until Bakugo spoke up saying that he won't back away when he has a chance of finding Deku to smack some sense into him. 
Soon others spoke up and agreed which caused Aizawa to hide a smile behind his scarf. Aizawa asked if there was anyone that wanted to take the offer but no one did which he nodded his head at. Okay then. Everyone needs to get in their gym uniforms and meet me at ground beta for some emergency training. A lot of you will be on evacuation duty but some may be closer to the front lines. I want to drill you in your actions on rescue work since this war will get destructive and we don't know if we can get everyone cleared away from the city that a portion of the fight will happen in. Aizawa said and they all ran to go get changed as Aizawa made his way out to the field. Nezu though smiled behind his teacup as he drank tea and watched the two classes agree to still go to the war in hopes of finding one Izuku Midoriya. So many sunsets and sunrises have passed my dear student. Only so few remain before we arrive at the crossroads of your life. I never believed in a god but if there truly is one then I hope they will bless you to have enough fortune to come out of all of this. Nezu thought as he sat his cup down and looked at a photo of one Izuku Midoriya. It was a photo of Nezu, Gran Torino and Izuku which Nezu had gotten off the security cameras before everything happened. While all of this happened, Izuku had finished his daily training as twice and Toga comes up to him in the mountains. Hey Izu. Toga called out and Izuku chuckled. Yes, Izuku asked as he wiped the sweat off his head. We brought you some drinks since we saw you were done. Twice said as he brought out different drinks but kept changing them from different hands as he kept recommending each one and then changing his mind. Izuku thanked them and stretched his muscles a bit as Toga asked for some blood as she tried to stab him to get a bit since Izuku always declines. Toga, I've explained a bit on why I don't offer you my blood. I don't want it killing you which has a good chance of doing so due to your quirk abilities. Izuku said as he truly didn't want it to kill her. He knew she could use quirks of those she transforms into which means if he did transform into Izuku then the fact is the quirk may kill her or have side effects since her body truly isn't as fit as Izuku's to handle the quirk. Toga pouted but Izuku reminded her that the PFL had a lot of fresh blood bags that they had on hand since members donated blood on a regular basis to ensure the group had a stock outside of hospitals for the wounded. This switched her focus like it always did as she drooled a bit at the thought of all of that fresh blood she could have. They soon made their way back to the villa as twice asked how much control he had gained in the recent months that had passed. Izuku thought it over and told him, I pushed my limit to a little over 70% from 65%. Izuku said while he in fact actually had 75% under control, and could push it to 80% without fracturing his bones but would start bruising it after prolonged use. Oh that was without support gear as he could go to 90% with support gear which was very important for this war. Thank god I had redistro acquire me support gear. Izuku thought, through all of the stress and constant usage in fighting over the many months that he had been with the league turned PFL. Izuku had steadily increased his control of one for all though he did wish he could control 100% without support gear since he knew this war would be difficult if Shigaraki woke up with all for one in his body. Though unknown to Izuku or anyone on the PFL side, the war was going to start much sooner as Izuku would not be informed of when it would start so he would be caught off guard just like everyone else would be so his cover wouldn't be blown. Third POV It was finally the day for it all to happen as the pro heroes were starting the war before the paranormal liberation front could start the war themselves. There were two separate forces of the pro heroes that were attacking. One force was going towards the hospital while the other force was going towards the mountain villa. Endeavor, Eraserhead, the detective, with a handful of other people were on the journey to the hospital while the bigger force of heroes was heading straight for the villa since they knew that all of the commanders of the PFL were in a scheduled meeting that was taking place that day. It was why they decided to launch the assault on that day of them all as the group held the meeting to capture as many people as possible before Shigaraki would wake up in another month and a half. Though there were other forces of heroes going after the other bases this meeting though was the largest with all of the enemy commanders though. As all of this happened, Nezu was in the command center that was a bit away from the battle since he couldn't help in physical combat. The hero commission decided not to call Redistro for a meeting like initially planned as Nezu had reminded them of the clones that twice could do as they had no way of ensuring it would really be the actual Redistro and the commission would be left more or less defenseless since all major heroes and a lot of the others were on the task's forces for the war. As all of the task's forces started to move around, Izuku was sitting in a meeting room with the other executives as they were about to head down to the basement area for the large gathering meeting. Izuku felt as if something was off but couldn't place it so he just ignored it. Hopefully, the attack will happen soon since Shigaraki will awaken in about another month and a half. Izuku thought as he stretched his muscles and stood up. It's time to go downstairs everyone. 
Izuku said and they all nodded as they headed downstairs. While they moved downstairs they were unaware of what was coming as we switched to the town of Jaku where people had started to notice the lack of pro heroes. Though there was one pro hero in the town which was Slid and Go who looked confused about the lack of heroes until Death Arms locked the man's head and slammed him into the ground so he couldn't escape as he called him out on being a part of Liberation shocking the Liberation member. It was at that moment that heroes flooded the city as the main group with Endeavor, Eraserhead, and others entered the hospital in search of the doctor and Shigaraki. Apart from the last few communications, Izuku had done a few months ago included the fact that the first doctor they find would likely be just a clone since twice had made clones for the doctor as the real one dedicated his time on Shigaraki. As such, they made sure to quickly move through the hospital while the evacuation team rushed into the city to start removing all of the citizens that they could. The people in Jaku City were really the only ones in danger of being harmed since the other cities had been mostly cleared but there were still heroes cleaning the outskirts of those cities since they couldn't officially clear the entire place, but only a major portion of it due to the fake chemical attacks which meant they could speed through it quickly. As the doctor moved down the hallway, he was whistling a tune as he thought about how close Shigaraki was to being completed when he was called out by a voice from behind him. Endeavor and they had found the doctor which eraser had turned his quirk on right away which showed them that the doctor indeed had a quirk not listed as he started to rapidly age. This must be how all for one lived so long. An anti-aging quirk though I wonder if this is the real doctor, asked the detective from the side of Eraserhead. Eraserhead quickly broke the doctor's leg to see if it was indeed a clone and it turned out it truly was a clone. Damn, keep moving. Endeavor called out as they hurried since the doctor likely found out about the clone being destroyed. The rabbit hero, Maruko, though had already sped off aiming for the morgue since she knew the chances of the first doctor being a fake was high so she took a lot of heroes to head off towards the underground lab. Though the doctor noticed what was going on a few moments later when he saw on the camera footage near him that heroes were heading towards him but the rabbit hero was moving fast as she passed a lot of Namus which she warned the others about. As the doctor was running, Maruko blasted through the walls killing the warping Namu with the rubble that fell. She smirked seeing the warping Namu was down for the count which she radio and so the others knew as the other raid would start as well right about now which meant the doctor had no way of escaping. While the fighting in the hospital had kicked off, the heroes had arrived at the mountain villa as the pro heroes rushed towards the building. Some students that had to join the front initially were scared like crazy like Charge Bolt who was asking why he was in the front. Though, the heroes made a dramatic entry as Cementos jumped ahead of everyone and slammed his hand on the ground controlling all of the cement that was used in the building as he warped it as he strained himself to provide a large opening so that enough heroes could get in without a bottleneck happening which would be dangerous for their side. As the different divisions of the PFL moved forward to fight the pro heroes, one PFL member who was a leader of one of the teams moved forward with his electrical quirk as he sent out an attack he called the Supreme Discharge. Thundered it but it got blocked and absorbed but none other than provisional hero Charge Bolt who got encouraged to act by midnight, and his classmate as he was told to fight for those that he cared most about. This allowed all of the pro heroes to keep pushing forward without the big scale attack that got launched and even pro hero Hawks flew in as he was given a target to hunt down. Hawk's target was none other than Twice himself as Twice presented a huge threat to the overall battle. As such, the pro hero sent feathers across the mansion to locate Twice as quickly as possible. And due to how many feathers he threw out he soon found the villain and went for him. Though while all of this happened, there were squads of pro heroes going to each of the hideouts escape paths that Izuku had given to Nezu so that they could be blocked. Izuku wasn't able to get an entire blueprint but he did know the locations which was the main thing the heroes needed to ensure that no one escaped unnoticed. Down in the assembly hall where Izuku was currently with Redistro since none of the other former league members wanted to sit in the meeting. A man came in yelling Redistro's name as Redistro said he could hear him. The man shouted out, heroes are coming, our comms are all jammed and the only way out is through the mansion. The man yelled making everyone turn to him as he kept explaining that there was an army of pro heroes attacking that had them surrounded. Redistro's quirk went off as he let his stress blow up as it was indeed a stressful thing to learn about. Izuku stood up quickly as he was shocked to hear about the attack. Seems they decided not to alert me which is fine with me. I wish I had more time to train but oh well. Izuku thought as he started to consider what he should do as he didn't know anything about the hero's side plans and was in the dark. Outside though, the villains were pushed into the mansion as heroes wiped some of them out like the ninja hero Edge Shot who poked a hole in people's lunges which made them impossible to fight. 
It wouldn't kill them but it would keep them out of the fight. Midnight then made them all sleep to ensure they didn't try anything as she waved her fans in front of them as she moved her quark gas around. Now while all of this went on outside, Hawks was currently detaining Twice who was being surrendered by all of the feathers from Hawks. The main objective was to arrest the man but Hawks was clear to kill him as well. Twice though wasn't going to go down without a fight as he refused to do anything less for the League as he saw it as his family. This caused a fight between both of them to break out but there were other fights going on as well through the place for example with Fatgum and his helpers who were aiming to block the last passageway that allowed people to escape out of the bunker from underground. For example, Sukayomi who were with Fat Gum sent Dark Shadow down the tunnel which encounters Redistro who was able to block Dark Shadow at full power for a bit before Redistro's fake legs gave out and broke which allowed Dark Shadow to throw the man all the way down back to the assembly hall as well as collapse the tunnel. Dark Shadow came back though scared as he had sensed another powerful individual down in the assembly hall who he called a real monster which was in fact Gigantomatia. Fat Gum confirmed the individual Dark Shadow was talking about but said he shouldn't move since the big boss was not on the field due to being asleep. That giant shouldn't move as long as the boss isn't moving around since no one else can order him around. Fat Gum said as Tsukayomi asked how they knew this intel which Fat Gum said he had no idea how their side found out about it. All of this fighting went on as Izuku had started to make his move upwards to get into the fighting since he still needed to act his part. In all honesty, he hoped Gigantamasha did not wake up even though he felt like he had a good chance of waking the giant up and ordering him around with some simple orders due to him carrying one for all which was connected to all for one and Shigaraki but Izuku wasn't going to test that theory right now. Izuku had seen Dabai rushing off in a direction before a large blast of fire happened which made Izuku wonder what was going on up there so he started to head in that direction. This was how the entire war started and only more devastation waited for everyone. As Izuku pushed forward to where Dabai had gone he was shocked to find the current number 3 pro hero Hawks fighting Dabai. But what shocked him, even more, was that twice was badly hurt which made Izuku feel horrible. D-A-M-N-I-T, I hate the fact that I connect with nearly all of them due to our pasts that share common points. Izuku thought as he was meant to be a hero but he still had grown some care towards each of them though Izuku realized he was still playing the part of the villain so he might as well keep it up as his part was not meant to come to an end until Shigaraki was detained from what he was told in the last physical meeting he had at UA. Flashback, as you are aware, due to the sheer scale of the threat we can't have you pulling out unless you believe you are compromised or you believe you are in mortal danger. I'm sorry it has come to this point but if we fail to stop Shigaraki from gaining power and defeat him in this war then you are to continue your mission even if it means staying with the PFL for years. We will likely never get a chance of having such a mole in such a high level position ever again. As such, even if the heroes lose you are not to break your role so do what you must as a villain. Do you understand? Asked the Prime Minister of Japan which Izuku nodded his head at. Izuku knew that this was a high chance the moment the League became the PFL but hearing it was scary since it meant he may never go home or have the truth revealed of him still being a hero. Another agreement was made that said that Inko Midoriya living costs would be taken care of for the rest of her life in the event Izuku Midoriya died due to his mission or became injured past the point of continuing hero work after the mission. Izuku thanked them but they said it was the minimum of what they could do since he might never return from the mission for years depending on how the war played out. Flashback over, as Twice was running on the railing area, Izuku saw Hawks going in for the killing blow which Izuku couldn't allow. Twice didn't deserve to die as he had barely done anything worthy of death in Izuku's view. As Hawks went for the killing blow, Izuku sped up quickly with OFA and sent out a black whip which grabbed Twice and pulled him out of the way which caused Hawks to look towards Izuku. Izuku Midoriya, S-rank villain, Hawks said as his eyes widened seeing Izuku. Dab I I got Twice, leaving it to you. Izuku said as he kept the real body of Twice in his whip and moved away. Good job accused, Dabai said with a grin on his face as he and Hawks went at it again. Izuku ran with Twice and soon found Twice and Mr. Compress being detained by a pro hero so he jumped down to them and knocked the man again the wall which forced him to release them. He then moved behind Toga and lowered Twice down but kept him in his hold. Twice isn't in combat shape anymore. We need to get out of here since if they know about this location then they might have discovered the hospital which isn't surprising since that damn lab takes a lot of energy. Izuku said as he grabbed the pro hero that he had knocked out and thrown him across the pathway so that he hoped the hero wouldn't get killed. Even though I play the villain part I can at least try to avoid needless deaths on the hero side or those from the league. Izuku thought, while they regrouped, 
A student on the outside known as Tsukayomi had decided to leave the safety of Fat Gum and head back as he believed his mentor Hawks was in danger for some reason in his gut and he was right. Tsukayomi arrived just in time to stop Dabai from killing Hawks at the last second. But more importantly back at the hospital things were heating up as the heroes were pushing through closer and closer to where the doctor and Shigaraki were currently located. The rabbit hero Mirko was fighting her way through the high-end Namus as she was getting closer and closer to them but she knew the high-ends had fully awakened and weren't in their sluggish states anymore. Damn it. Got to do what you got to do. Mirko thought as she changed her plans and left the Namus where they were at as she charged forward into the lab. She went deeper and deeper as she ran as fast as she could even though the Namu landed more blows on her. Endeavor and the others were pushing as fast as they can to come to support her but she had finally found the tube that Shigaraki was in and at that moment from just glancing at S. Higaraki she felt overwhelming fear due to his existence. She landed a kick on the chamber holding Shigaraki but before she could fully complete it the chamber only cracked slightly releasing some of the water and pressure inside of it. The Namu that had stopped her from fully destroying the equipment pulled her back as she was tossed out of the deepest part of the lab where she was thrown into Endeavor who had been closing into the lab area. Mirko who was being held by Endeavor screamed out for them to finish it off. Shigaraki is in there. So is the old fart. We can't let him wake up. She yelled out to everyone near her. Eraser head and the others kept pushing forward as they knew backup would be only a few moments away. But he knew by the tone of Mirko's voice that those few seconds were still highly important. As such, he told X Les and Mike to run into the lab and finish it as Crust and Eraser had dealt with the Namus. As they arrived, they could see that the doctor was preparing to wake Shigaraki up as he pressed a button the same moment present Mike destroyed the container that held Shigaraki. As present Mike punched the doctor, X Les checked Shigaraki and found no heartbeat but the doctor spoke. He's in a death-like state to better withstand the process. The capsule was for facilitating the procedure while preserving and reviving him. The doctor said as he cried. In those moments more heroes arrived and started to wipe out the remaining Namu that were in the lab as the heroes believed they were within the grasp of victory. As present Mike grabbed the doctor and started to leave, X Les saw a machine that was still running. But what he didn't know was that leaving Shigaraki where he has only screwed them over. The reason for this was due to the fact that inside of Shigaraki's mind, he was currently seeing his past family who he had ended up killing but also his grandmother. Though there was one more individual, his master all for one. Shigaraki pushed away his family as Nana Shimura asked him not to forget and not to reject who she was but that still left all for one in his mind. All for one called out Shigaraki to come to him which made him start walking to him but before he fully reached the man he froze as words suddenly came to his mind. Tenko, I don't understand all for one and your relationship as best as I can but be careful. Since the doctor is passing his quirk to you then it means that all for one has an echo inside of the quirk which will be inside of you which means he can directly influence you like the past users have been trying to do against me since I've turned away from all might. It's all about who will is stronger and more directed that determines who is in control so don't let him just take your body. Please Tenko, Izuku asked back in the lab which made Tenko Shimura Akatamura Shigaraki freeze. All for one was displeased as he ordered Tamura Shigaraki to come to him again in a bit more forceful tone but Shigaraki had another idea. As he came up to all for one he suddenly attacked the man and decayed the echo. What are you doing? All for one yelled. I won't let you take my body over. You had your turn in the world now it's mine as I will choose what I do without you controlling me. Shigaraki said as he remembered Izuku Midoriya's words. The words from a person who was so similar to himself who had spoken and honestly in concern which Shigaraki hadn't had done in genuine for so long as he knew that if he gave in to his master here then he would not be the one controlling his body anymore like Izuku had warned him about. Thank you for everything but I will walk my own path even if it gets me killed. Shigaraki said and then suddenly in the real world his body was shocked with electrical currents from the machine that Shigaraki had been in. The machine had been broken yes but power was still going through it to complete the process of waking him up and with one electrical shock it had completed its task as Tamura Shigaraki had started to wake up. While this happened in the hospital we go back a bit in time as we go back to the situation with Hawks as Tsukayomi was protecting the injured hero. Dabai asked the student from Wana why he was here which he responded that he was concerned about his mentor. But Dabai only smirked as he told the boy that the pro heroes had their hands far dirtier than most villains as he sent a blast of fire. Hawks informed his mentee that Dabai couldn't rapid fire his quirk since it was tweaking with each attack so he told his student to go which caused Tsukayomi to jump over the railing and use dark shadow to hold on as they went down several levels before dropping down due to the dark shadow being weakened by the flames. Though as they were escaping, 
Dabai tried to end it with Antor Blast as he dropped down as well but sadly the ice user Getan caused a large blast that got into Dabai's way of finishing it off as Getan freed the people that were being pushed back to allow them to have a fighting chance. Though this had given the student Fumikage Takoyami enough time to use Dark Shadow to escape with Hawks. As this happened, many things changed due to the situation at the hospital where Shigaraki had woken up. Izuku who was currently moving with twice, Toga, and Mr. Compress suddenly froze as they were pushing their way through some fighting. They looked at him and asked what was wrong as he shook his head and spoke. Tenko woke up. The heroes failed to stop him at the hospital and now he woke up though incomplete I believe. It's time for us to leave and meet up with him as Gigantamacia should be ready to move now. Izuku said and they were stunned as they didn't know how he knew this. It's part of the legacy that connects me to Tenko now that he has all for one in his veins. I can somewhat sense him and he likely can sense me. Please accept that statement okay. Izuku said as he asked them to and they nodded their heads since they were just glad Shigaraki woke up. Toga did ask why Izuku kept calling Shigaraki by the name of Tenko since they didn't know his real name. Izuku explained it was his birth name which Shigaraki allows Izuku to call him by since they have a lot of common points in their past. While all of this happened and they prepared for getting a ride hopefully on Gigantamacia. Down in Jaku City the other heroes who specialized in rescue or other provisional heroes were helping as well but they didn't know what was coming because back in the hospital. Shigaraki raised his body and spoke. I'm cold. Shigaraki said as suddenly everything changed as Shigaraki's decay quirk launched itself across the building destroying everything in its path. The new user of All for One had awakened from his slumber. With that guys I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe and see you next time peace.